let's move on. It's been a while since we've had Clayton on. Clayton, as everybody knows, is a Packers fan. Clayton, I want to hand the floor over to you. Kind of a state of the Packers address. Jordan Love, he's coming off of an injury, so you don't want to think too much about it. But also, he has not been that guy that he was at the end of last year. He was better. He's been better than he was at the start of last year. That $55 million contract, a little bit shaky at the moment, all right? But we love Jordan Love. And the way that we know that we love Jordan Love is he threw a pick six, a horrible pick six, this past game. But because we like Jordan Love, we say, oh, look at him trying to make a play, trying to avoid a safety. Whereas if that was Will Levis, that's getting memed out of this atmosphere, all right? It's not there like it was last year for Jordan Love. Are the Packers in any sort of panic? They're three and two. I know they're fine. Any sort of panic around Jordan Love, or is this just him working back from injury? Yeah, I, I totally think it's him working back from injury. And on top of that, I think this just shows the value of playing guys in the preseason. There's not enough teams that do it, and I would really like to see our team transition back to doing that. You have these Aaron Rodgers ramp-ups, and I've had this for years, where you go out, you lose week one and two to some random team. Like the, I remember losing to the Jets and week two of a season that they were just an awful team. And, you know, we're, we're kind of like, oh, we have a relaxed moment from Aaron Rodgers. We'll see the same thing from Jordan Love. I think the the difference between the two is he has, he's an explosive playmaker. Jordan Love does not care about taking risks. He's of the Favre uh, vein. Uh, you know, same quarterback coach for all three guys, Tom Clements. He's a great coach. Uh, should be a Hall of Famer at the end of his career. But if you can see it, Jordan Love is more willing to take risks. Um, Matt LaFleur also does a really great job of play calling. I think the offensive line is a bit of a question mark right now still. i like to see a little bit more out of the left tackle position when you're talking about you know Jordan Love sustaining his, his play. He needs to have time in the pocket. If you get pressure on him, you see how much he panics and just wants to throw the ball and tries to make a big play, and it usually comes back to bite him. So there's no, there's no concern on my end, though. This is just a ramp-up period. Again, he's played he played one game in Rio, Brazil, and then he got hurt. And then Malik Willis came in, and nobody is saying Malik Willis is going to be that, that guy. It's just nice to have a serviceable backup who's good who's coachable. Um and I think you would have seen Malik Willis. He got away with two games because we have such an such a great coach calling the plays and we had a really good scheme and we had really good matchups against the Colts and the Titans. Um they're really nobody's in this league this year. So but that was not going to continue with Malik Willis. He'd, he wouldn't have won very many more because he can't really throw the ball that effectively when it comes to getting that game-winning drive. Jordan Love, on the other hand, he'll have a bad drive like that, and then I think the next 10 passes, he went 10 for 10, over 100 yards and a touchdown. So he's very streaky, and I think as he gets going throughout the season, he's going to be more and more consistently good, as we saw last year. The key is that run game, though. If we can run the ball, it really takes pressure off of him, and if we can protect him in the pocket – um, he'll have no problem returning to that top-tier quarterback play, which I know he is capable of, and I know he can do it consistently. He just needs some time to ramp up. Josh Jacobs, on the other hand, oh, I got one more thing on him. Um, I see him as a one-year rental. I know it's kind of a, maybe a little bit of a hot take from the Packers. I think the way his contract was structured, it's a one- or two-year deal, and I really don't know what our long-term plans are, but I am thankful that he's healthy because I think he is a good part of the, the offense there. You just expect more production of him out of the red zone. I know he had a really bad fumble against the Colts going on the, on the one yard line. So there's a little bit more I expect of him and hopefully he evolves throughout the season. But overall, uh, Xavier McKinney, man, that dude is an absolute animal. And I am, I can't believe the Giants let him walk for what he's doing on a different team. And he's doing the same things on the Giants team too. So the fact that you let Barkley and him walk from your team is just ridiculous, in my opinion. Um, yeah, but we're in a good spot. I think we got a few more weeks here to show it, but we're in a really tough division this year too, so it's going to be a battle. Yeah, that's where I wanted to go next. What's your confidence level on actually winning this division right now? Vikings 5-0, and Lions look good, even... Even Caleb Williams came out and had a pretty good game last game. I know it's against the Panthers, but with as bad as Caleb Williams looked the first two weeks of the season, I just wanted to see him do something against an NFL defense. He looked really good this past week. Are the Packers going to win this division, or have you already reserved yourself to a wild card spot? I don't think I had the expectation of winning the division. Um, I think wild card spot is probably a safer play 
You look at the Lions team, I think they got one more season before the, the wheels fall off, and that's when Ben Johnson leaves for a head coaching job. And then you have a guy, Dan Campbell's a really good motivator, but I don't think he's good schematically. And I mm-hmm. think that's where Ben Johnson thrives. So unless they can replace him, I think the uh, the Goff contract kicks, it, kicks in, the Amon Ra contract kicks in, the Penne Suel contract kicks in. Suddenly you don't have these guys like David Montgomery in your roster who are really good workhorse running backs. I think Gibbs is not as good as the they drafted him. Uh, he's a good running back. Don't get me wrong. I don't think he's going to be over the top elite in the league, though. So I think once the Lions have this last year, so they're going to be competitive for this year. The Vikings have absolutely jumped out of here. You know, I, I call them dead at the start of the season, and boy, was I wrong. Yeah, me uh, too. That being said, it's a long season. This is five weeks. They have a bye, and this isn't necessarily a time where you want to buy when everything is going your way. Um I guess with Aaron Aaron Jones' injury, you're going to hopefully get him back at the end, back into the bye week. But you saw Sam Darnold come back down to earth against a decent defense in the Jets. So I want to see Sam Darnold do it for longer before I'm ready to anoint the Vikings as the NFC North champion, especially when you get into, into divisional play here. I know they played the Packers already, and I'm not going to comment too much on that game just because, again, Jordan Love's coming back from injury. But... This is going to be a tight race, and I think this is why you see none of these teams really get those prime time slots. Um, I think they're reserving them for the end of the season because you're going to start seeing some games with some serious playoff impl- implications week 14, 15, 16, 17. So exciting times in our division for sure. Yeah, nobody saw this coming from the Vikings. And you bring up Sam Darnold having a rough week a little bit, getting shaken up a little bit by the Jets' defense. But that was kind of the one question that everybody had about the Vikings, is what is this team when Sam Darnold doesn't play well? They're still a fantastic defense. They still have enough playmakers. They still run the ball. So that answered a huge question for me this week, is are the Vikings legit? Can they do it without Sam Darnold playing out of his mind, without everything being schemed up? Yeah, they can, because Brian Flores is a freaking stud, best defensive coordinator in the league the Vikings don't have that much talent on defense living up here in Minnesota I hear way too much about the Vikings way more than I would like to they don't have a lot of talent on that defense this is Brian Flores scheming it up and if they're that defense is rocking it doesn't really matter if Sam Darnold has a bad day as it showed against the Jets I'll say one thing about them though real quick Brian Flores he they're in a good spot because Kevin O'Connell is one of the best offensive coaches in the NFL period like he is a great coach I was actually upset when they hired him because they finally made a good decision at head coach. Then you look at defense with Brian Flores, who, you know, with his, I don't know his legal situation with the whole Miami Dolphins suing the NFL for discriminating against him. Um, that might get him to stay longer. So it might play in their favor. Cause I don't know if any team is just gung ho going to go give him another contract with that situation more so from the NFL standpoint than any other franchise. So if you look at Brian Flores and Kevin O'Connell staying there for long term. That's a recipe for a good team, no matter really who you have in the field. The other side of the argument, though, is that the secondary of the Vikings is absolutely ancient for NFL standards. So you got Stephon Gilmore, you got Diggs, you got um, Harrison Smith. Mm-hmm. Like these guys are not going to be around for two, three more years. Right. So it's a it's a quick window. That being said, I trust Kevin O'Connell and Brian Forrest to be able to find adequate replacements for them. Um, but there's a lot of moving parts, and I like I said, I. I understand the flash. I want to see them if they're not a flash in the pan. I want to see them go the full season. And I know I've been, I was saying that earlier this season of, I want to see, you know, Sam Darnold go on the road and play. Right. So it's five weeks. This is a 17 week or 17 game season plus playoffs. A lot changes. And we see this all the time where teams peak too early and they come out, you know, week 14, 15, start losing games. And then it just segues into the playoffs like the Eagles last year. So long season, but. Vikings fans should be way more excited than they were at the start of the year for sure. Yeah, there is a lot of miserable Sam Darnold play in all of our heads that's going to take just a little more time to uninstall and install this new good footage, right? Absolutely. It's it's going to take a while. I'm not all the way in on the Vikes yet, but I'm pretty in on the Vikes. I think the Vikes have played outstanding. All right, they're a good la- team for sure. They're a good team. Last point on the Green Bay Packers. What's their final record this year? Give us Give us a prediction. Matt LaFleur always cooks up a 12-win season. Um, I think with the early, yeah, we have a pretty tough road coming up, though. So I'm going to go, I'll go 10 to 11 wins for a wild card spot. I think I think these NFC North teams are going to start beating each other down, though. So I would expect that to potentially be enough to win the NFC North. Okay. Um, but I think the Packers are going to get pretty hot here. 
coming into the next couple weeks. Yeah, Packers' upcoming schedule. Cardinals, Texans at Jacksonville, Lions at Bears. So that's a pretty tough five-game stretch. We'll see what happens with the Pack.